I think the, the, the funny thing for me is that so many people are like, oh, I understand compression perfectly well, but I don't understand rebound. If you took our damper out and flipped it upside down, it would still work. Yeah. It's the exact same thing. That there's a there's a low speed compression and a high speed compression, and there's a low speed rebound and a high speed rebound, and they look the same. Okay. They provide the same function. One's an orifice, which is low speed, one's a valve stack, which is high speed. Mm-hmm. So low low speed compression is your basic ride quality, your your balance. High speed compression is for bigger hits, bottom out, more support. That's exactly the same for rebound, except that it, all it sees is the forces pushing against it, which is your spring. Okay. Yeah. So it's that simple, so right? It's that simple. It is the exact same thing. <laughs> okay. So how would we, is it possible to give some characteristics maybe of a bike that is let's start off with being overly fast not enough rebound damping on either the high speed or the low speed circuit or what might that feel like it it tends to feel very nervous that the bike's moving so much you don't get a very planted feel you don't get as much ground feel um traction can probably get better with fast rebound Mm -hmm. and single event hits are going to be still going to be good because you've got this full travel fork to use because it's always riding high in the travel. You'll also feel the bars be quite high relative to slowing the rebound down. Yeah. Okay. Um, And I think in the last few years, there's definitely been this push to run fast, fast rebound. Yeah. Which without something to measure it against, um, it's hard to say what fast rebound is. Uh huh. Um, I think if anything, you'd want to err on the fast side, for me at least. Yeah. But uh, you don't, there is no benefit to just going really fast. Yeah, okay. Not just wide open on all those dials and hoping that it's just going to smash through stuff. Are there certain things that if you were riding and you felt, you'd be like, oh, I'm a bit too fast on high speed rebound here, or I'm a bit too fast on low speed rebound? Like, how would you. Is it possible to try and separate those in terms of how you would describe the on-trail behavior of either of them being too fast? Oh, man, that's a good one to to actually put into words. Uh, it's much easier to do by feel than it is to say, oh, this is, it feels like this. Um, and well, m- more than anything else, those two work together. Yeah, okay. Compression, you could have low speed compression closed and high speed, high speed open. Your bike would still work okay. Yeah. If you tried that with rebound, I think you end up just not getting much out of it. Uh, okay. Is there some crosstalk between those two? Like, does... Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so if you wind on low speed, you'll also be slowing the high speed end of that curve yeah. as well. Yeah, and it's the yeah. same with compression, but it's nothing to get wrapped up in. Yeah. So many people ask, well, where, where exactly does it cross over? <laughs> it's like, I have, I have no idea. It really depends on pressure and where your settings are. But the fact is that it should be a smooth line. You shouldn't really see a, this is low, this is high. Yeah. It should be a seamless act. Yeah, there isn't a, a shift point between the two no, speeds. Hopefully, but hopefully not. Like, are there certain things that a rider comes into the pits at a World Cup and says to you, that lead you towards either the low speed or the high speed rebound are there certain or noises or you know i like some of these guys like to make a few random noises at you but (laughs) i think one of the most telling ones is um entering a berm at a a decent clip because the bike's going to compress when it transfers all the weight into the berm the bike's going to compress and when rebound is too fast in the front the front end tends to come up quickly and you want, you're going to oversteer. Okay. So you want to, you'll turn out of the burn because the head angle got really slack again and the weight came off the front wheel. Uh huh. If the rebounds fast in the back, it does the opposite. It kind of drives all the weight onto the front wheel. The front wheel tends to turn in a bit and you, you tend to push in. Yeah. So that's a that's a quick, easy way, but again, that's 
not everybody finds hard compression berms yeah to fair. ride on it really depends on your trail yeah the other thing is on steep terrain a lot of rebound really depends on how much weight you have on either the bars or the pedals mm-hmm. so if it's consistently steep and your hands are always pushing on the bars you're actually compressing that suspension so the rebound's going to be a little bit slower if you hook up data to these things you can see that on steep terrain the same setting is a little bit faster than on flat terrain okay yeah so we don't always get this perfect rebound no but i guess it's the same in the back on flat terrain your weight is more centered over that axle it's a little bit easier to control you might feel it on jumps yeah where you know you hit the limp everything compresses and the rear wheel wants to go pass over your head i've definitely had that so is that uh that's a, for me in my head i'm like i need to slow down the high speed rebound in that instance because it's coming from more than likely yeah deep stroke like and rapidly returning and trying to almost buck you over the front yeah that's a pretty telltale for rebound yeah but you could the one also... where people get confused is multiple bumps okay or they say they get bucked bucked is the new the new term now and it doesn't mean anything. It could mean that your rebound's really slow mm-hmm. and you didn't have any suspension to use on that hit. So then you got bucked. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, so, so like an, an indication, I guess, of rebounds being too slow is what I think if you heard the term packing, where like yeah. as you go over repeated, like if you're on sort of braking bumps or something, the bike feels good as you go in. It gets progressively and progressively worse feeling as the suspension just doesn't have the speed to recover in order to absorb the next hit in the line, basically. So it's maybe exactly. easier to pin down rebounds that are a bit too slow than it is rebounds a bit fast, maybe. I don't know. Packing is quite, an, I find anyway, quite an obvious, even at a very amateur level, like quite an obvious thing to feel on a bike. Yeah, I think you'd be surprised. I, I find people that. You really have to get them to go find something and ask them, is it a single event hit or is this multiple hits? And then it felt bad. Okay. And then they come back and they go, oh, no, it was just it was just the one. I'm like, okay, well, that's probably rebound. Or, yeah, yeah I went in and I hit three bumps and the third one was horrible. I got kicked. Well, then rebound's probably slow. Yeah. Got yeah. Okay. But again, this is where bracketing so i had issues with arm pump at the first race of the year and sort of put it down to fitness initially but then i had i was like right let's just go and play for a day and see what fork settings do because like this is my example i said earlier where i was like i normally run a bit faster rebound than the manual settings with fox so i'll do that and that's where i'll start and i just put them on went and rode it it felt kind of okay but i was suffering with arm pump in the rides that I'd done up to that like race, but I didn't have any baseline on that bike. So I didn't know whether arm pump was normal for me riding a downhill bike down those tracks because I'd never done it before. Um, anyway, so I took myself off for a day. I was like, and just drew up a little list. I was like, right from the setting I'm at, let's call that where we start and first run. Well, I just do two or three runs, just get this track that I know well, like dialed, get a speed on it that I feel comfortable with that I can ride at all day. And then we'll try two clicks open on low speed rebound, two clicks more closed on low speed rebound, see which is better. Same on the high speed circuit. And it was, I don't think, I mean, I'm not a great rider. I don't think I have the best feel, but I'm quite analytical, I guess. I was really surprised how obvious mm-hmm. those differences were. Like even just going two clicks in one direction, you could, re- I could really feel that because I knew what the bike was doing on that track. And it was eye-opening. So, yeah, I ended up on a setting that I felt way more composed on. my. I was getting way less fatigue through the upper body and felt like I had more grip as well and, like, a more composed bike. And yeah. then, yeah, got home and checked it against the manual settings and I was back exactly to where I should have started from. <laughs> That's perfect. But Yeah, yeah I mean, there's that, so that many whole... little things going on at once that, you don't really have to focus on these things, but it is kind of fascinating how how many changes a click of rebound makes. 
whether it's bringing the bars down, it's putting more weight on the front tire. It, there's, there's so many little things that it affects. Um, we've also seen quite a few people complain of arm pump, and it turns out that the shock is too fast. Uh, okay, which is what, like forcing them onto the front more or? Forcing you onto the bars and you're constantly pushing back to try to keep the weight back over the back wheel. <laughs> no way. So it's all connected and it's all a cycle. You, you can't just do one thing and then come back, do another. It's always kind of circling through these things. Yeah, and then like it, something like as simple as, oh, I just got a new handlebar. It almost, every time I change anything, I feel like it's, it doesn't take you back to the start, but the puzzle is re the box of the puzzle has been reopened. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, put a two and a half mil stem spacer on. It feels like your bars just went up a mile and you can't ride the bike. And then in 15 minutes, you can't tell anymore. Yeah, you adapt, but right? These minor little changes are pretty drastic at first. And I think that's critical as well is to make changes with an open mind and explore them a little bit. Don't immediately go, nope, that didn't work. Yeah.